When you first start reading Of Mice and Men, it might seem like Steinbeck is describing some sort of paradise. The golden foothill slopes of the strong and rocky Gabalan Mountains. The willows fresh and green with every spring. The rabbits and the deer that come to drink in the dark. It all seems quite idyllic, doesn't it? Have a closer look, though. And you'll notice some bleaker, darker, more negative words and phrases in these first few pages. Look at the crisp sycamore leaves, for instance. Crisp because they're dead under the feet of George and Lenny. It's evening, a time when the day is drawing to an end. Death and darkness are everywhere as the shade climbed up the hills. And what about the description of the rabbits? They sit down quietly like little grey sculptured stones, gravestones maybe. Steinbeck even says, for a moment the place was lifeless. Oh, I love Of Mice and Men. I actually think there's lots of hope in it. I think it's a really positive novel in lots of ways, but you can't get away from the despair and the negativity, I'm afraid. It's there in the title, an intertextual reference to Robert Burns' poem To a Mouse, in which he writes, the best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glay. Whoever you are, your dreams won't come true. Your plans won't come to fruition. You can plan and dream and be as ambitious as you want, but ultimately the American dream is just that, a dream, a myth, a fantasy. Life will end in despair, disappointment and disillusionment. Sorry, but it's there in the title. And the foreshadowing on Steinbeck's part is there too in the first couple of pages, even before we've really met George and Lenny. And when we do meet them, in many ways they're portrayed as typical migrant workers. In the harsh conditions of 1930s America, they're struggling to survive as they travel from ranch to ranch looking for work in the midst of the Great Depression. Unemployment rates are soaring. Workers are leaving the cities looking for work and travelling to the fertile land of California from the Dust Bowl states of Texas and Oklahoma. If you want to find out a little bit more about the lives of migrant workers during this time, read another of Steinbeck's novels, The Grapes of Wrath. Listen to some folk music of the time by Woody Guthrie or have a look at some of the photos of Dorothea Lange. When Steinbeck first describes George and Lenny, he says that they were both dressed in denim trousers and in denim coats with brass buttons. Both wore black shapeless hats and both carried tight blanket rolls slung over their shoulders. The denim isn't a fashion statement on the men's part. It's the typical durable material of the clothes workers would have worn in the 1930s. Steinbeck is telling us who these men are through their clothes. It's like as if they're wearing a uniform, if you like. People often refer to Of Mice and Men as a microcosmic representation of reality. So what we see in the novel is a microcosm, a little mini version of what's happening on a larger scale in the country. Steinbeck is writing a political novel here. He's highlighting the plight of a marginalised group of people suffering in a country that's collapsing economically. In other ways, though, Steinbeck is saying the very opposite. In other words, that George and Lenny are anything but typical migrant workers. One of the main features of the migrant workers' lives that he seeks to highlight in the novel is their loneliness. Look at where it's set, near the town of Soledad. Soledad is Spanish for loneliness. And later on in the novel, we see them playing card games. One of the games that they play is solitaire. They live in a place called loneliness. They play a game called loneliness. It's not surprising that they're lonely. Why are they lonely? Well, it's a byproduct of their lifestyle. If you're constantly travelling from ranch to ranch looking for work and never have enough money to settle down anywhere, any relationships that you do form are going to be transitory and superficial. What about George and Lenny though? Are they lonely? Well, let's look, have, a, have a look at the dream that George recounts to Lenny towards the end of the chapter. Guys like us that work on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world, he says. They got no family. They don't belong no place. They come to a ranch and work up a steak and they go into town and they blow their steak. And the first thing you know, they're pounding their tail on some other ranch. They ain't got a thing to look ahead to. Lenny interrupts and says, oh, that's it. That's it. N now tell how it is with us. George goes on. With us it ain't like that. 
We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room blowing in our jack just because we got no place else to go. If them other guys get in jail, they can rot for all anybody gives a damn. But not us. Then he broke in. Oh, but not us. And uh, um, why? Because, because, because I got you to look after me and you got me to look after you and that's why. Can you see the contrast there? Let me read it to you again. But this time, I'm going to miss a few words out. Us. They. 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 There. 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 They. Us. Us. We. We. Us. We. Our. We. Them. They. Us. Us. I. You. Me. You. Me. You. Okay, so I missed a few words out there, didn't I? But can you see the point that it's all about us on the one hand and them on the other? They've got each other. George and Lenny are saying, we've got each other. We don't get lonely. We've got a friendship. We can rely on each other. Whereas them, well, they, they're alone. They're isolated. They've got no one that they can confide in. It's all about us and them. And in the exam, you can make a brilliant point about this, about how Steinbeck uses pronouns to contrast George and Lenny's perception of themselves in comparison to the other migrant workers. If you found that useful, then please like it, share it and subscribe to English Gorillas.